The fourth method we want to look at is average accounting return. Uh, accountants generally have this information available in the form of an income statement or a balance sheet, or you can put one together if it's a projection and you're a financial analyst, a manager doing a projection for, for let's say, uh, a new shopping center you want to build. Uh, you can certainly build an income statement and a balance sheet for five years, as we learned in Chapter 4, for this new project. <clears throat> AAR is just simply average net income divided by average book value. So from the income statement, I get the average net income over five years. Then um, on the balance sheet, projected balance sheet for this project, I will get the average book value. So let's look at uh, a sample um, investment. This uh, project costs, let's say we're going to build a new store in a shopping center, costs $500,000, five-year life. Uh, the investment will be 100% depreciated straight line to zero, and the tax rate is 25%. As we learned in uh, chapters three and four, the, whenever we have a new project, we do several things. First, build an income statement. Uh, these are the pro forma steps of a good financial plan. Second, we build a balance sheet. And third, we build a cash flow for this uh, project. And we uh, see, and we start applying some of these techniques. So the AAR, we're going to build an income statement, and here it is. And you can simply get the average net income by taking the bottom line, adding it up, and dividing by five, because you have five years. So 100,000 plus 150,000 plus 50,000 plus zero plus 50,000 divided by five, and you get an average net income of $50,000. Average book value over the course of the five years is a straight line that starts at today at 500,000 of. Uh, uh, fixed assets and goes uh, all the way down, net fixed assets goes all the way down to zero. Um, so, and again, you can lay that out on a five year plan. You can have 500,000 in gross fixed assets each year, minus 100,000 in uh, proper, in uh, accumulated depreciation, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, uh, and subtract that each year. And you'd see uh, times zero, you'd have a gross book value and net book value of 500,000. And by year five, this the net book value would be zero uh, of those uh, assets, net, uh, net total assets would be uh, zero. Uh, and that looks like a straight line that we're depreciating straight line to zero. So you can take the two endpoints and bisect them and divide by two, so you get uh, 500000 divided by two is $250,000 is your average book value if you were to lay out a balance sheet for this project. Uh, question, should we open this store? Uh, so AAR is average net income divided by average book value, and we get 50000 divided by 250000 or 20%. So the uh, target, you still need a target from the CFO. And if your target is less than 20%, then you accept the project. If the uh, target AAR is higher from the CFO, then this one will get scrapped. Um, so again, what are some of the advantages? Easy to calculate. The uh, information is readily available, or you can develop it very quickly yourself. Uh, disadvantage, not a true rate of return. It's an accounting rate of return, and we don't look at time value of money uh, based on accounting values, not cash flow or market values. And so not as good as some of our other techniques. Uh, still, this is a technique for evaluating your major capital investments.